Hello everyone, ADS Play 101 here and welcome to the Pokemon Unite public test server. Uh, and in this stream I'm going to be, or well, in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys, I'm, uh, I'm going to be testing out two of the Pokemon that got updated to the public test server, um, which is Dotrio and Scizor. Now, for those of you who don't know, let me just pop this up real quick. It was announced on their Twitter that, of course, after Buzzwole, Glaceon, and Tyranitar, the next three Pokemon will be Mew, Dotrio, and Scizor. And you see the release dates for them here, as well as the events that they're going to be taking place. Yes, that is the legendary trainer, Leon. They will be bringing him in for a special event where you can challenge him. I'm pretty sure there's some rewards you're going to get. They didn't really go in and out of it, but these are the release dates for it right here. So we're getting Mew on the 2nd of September. So that is going to be on a Saturday, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, it's going to, no, it's going to be on a Friday. So that's, so that's this upcoming Friday. We're getting Mew. Um, on the 14th, Dodrio is going to be released. And on the, on the 28th, which is later on, you know, in the month, uh, we're going to be getting uh, Scizor. And of course, there's some new costumes you guys can see right here. Mew is getting some costumes. Um, and if you look, there's a line that kind of splitting up the events apart. So you can see what's going to happen when. So there's really no question. So we're, so we're getting three new Pokemon, several events, including a, a versus a legendary trainer event in Leon. Um, and we're going to be getting the new Sky uh, Ruins uh, map. Um, I think either that's coming on October 10th or it's coming towards the end of this month because I see they have two different Sky Ruins events. One's coming with Mew and the other one looks like it's coming with Dodrio. So I'm assuming that's when we're, that's when we're getting it officially on the 14th. I don't know. It's going to be something. It's going to be interesting to see. So uh, with that being said, let me turn this off. Let's jump into the Pokemon Unite test server and let's test out Dodrio and Sizor. Now, Mew isn't on the test server. I don't know why they didn't put him in there. Maybe because, you know, he's so close to release that it just didn't make any sense to put him in there yet. Or maybe they'll add him in afterwards, but at that, that point, everybody's going to be on the main game. So I guess it really wouldn't matter then. And on top of that, um... I guess that's all I wanted to say about Mew. <laughs> but as far as Dodrio and Scizor, out of the two, the one I'm going to be taking the first look at is actually Scizor, is actually uh, Scizor. Because with Dodrio, I'm actually, I actually have something very interesting to, to, to point out. And it could lead to the next batch of Pokemon we get after this. You know, and one Pokemon in particular kind of comes to mind when you see some of the moves that, one of the moves that Dodrio has and as well as some of the unique gimmicks that is with them. So, um, as well as with Scizor, or excuse me, Scizor. So with that being said, let me jump into a practice session. I'll just do a quick custom. All right. In this, they don't let you do custom mode. So you, the only way to really practice with them is you gotta go to practice mode. So, I'm going to show you guys the moves right here. Because if I go to progression, it's going to look like a hot mess. <laughs> Again, this is the test server, so they don't have all the bugs ironed out. You know, it's just giving you a chance to try out with the try out the latest Pokemon kind of early to get a feel of who, or, or what they play like. So, just to give you a look at the moves real quick. So again, first I'm going to be trying out Scizor. Now there's something interesting about Scizor. If you're a fan of the early Pokemon games, um, you'll understand what I mean. So you see right here, he, she starts off with Fury Cutter. You can read the description right there. I'm kind of going by kind of quick. Um, and he has Quick Attack. You know, has the da has the user dash forward dealing damage to opposing Pokemon and make it, it makes contact with along the way. So I might as well read Fury Cutter. Has the user slash twice with its scythe in a cone in front of itself, dealing damage to opposing Pokemon it hits. The second slash deals more damage than the first. 
and his first set of moves are wing beat or dual wing beat. It has the user slash in front of itself with both of its sights dealing damage to opposing Pokemon in the X shaped area of effect. If this move deals damage to an opposing Pokemon in the center of the X shaped area of effect, it restores the user's HP. If this move hits an opposing Pokemon, it can be used again within a set amount of time. If this move is used again, the user dashes to the designated direction, dealing damage to opposing Pokemon it makes contact with. The dash deals more damage the lower the opposing Pokemon's HP is. Okay. And an upgrade and increases the damage dealt by the move. The next one we have is Bullet Punch. So this one uh, has the user dash in the designated direction and strike opposing Pokemon with tough punches. If this move hits opposing Pokemon, its cooldown is reduced. The user recovers a portion of its HP based on the amount of damage dealt. If bullet punch is used again within a set amount of time, the number of punches and the amount of damage dealt increase. The number of punches increase from three to, to a five, to a maximum of five. And the upgrade also grants a shield if this move hits a, an opposing Pokemon. So the next set of moves, one, we have double hit. The user jumps to the, designate, the designated direction, dealing damage to opposing Pokemon. It hits during the jump and applying a mark to them. After the user hits opposing Pokemon with this move, it jumps again in the designated direction. When the user lands, its basic attack becomes a boosted attack and, it's, and it charges at a nearby opposing Pokemon. If a mark Pokemon, if a mark opposing Pokemon is knocked out, all of the user's move cooldowns are reduced, and the upgrade reduces the move's cooldown. And next up, we have Sword Dance, which everybody should be familiar with. Um, has the user dash a short distance, increasing its attack for a short time. While the user attack is deep, is increased, the user of the user's eighth basic attack becomes an area of effect that pierces through opposing Pokemon in a line. And this upgrade also reduces the damage the user receives from opposing Pokemon while dashing. And his Unite move, Green Illusion Dive. It has the user dive, it has the user dash and attack a designated Pokemon on the opposing team, then create five illusionary copies of itself that each dash a set distance from the user. The copies deal damage to opposing Pokemon they make contact with and apply a mark a mark to them. After, after a short time, the copies return to the user dealing damage to opposing Pokemon they make contact with. This move can be used again before the illusionary the illusory copies return to the user. If it is used again, the user dashes to the, the user dashes in the designated direction and deals damage to opposing Pokemon it hits. At the end of the dash, the copies dash to the user's location. If a copy makes contact with an opposing Pokemon while dashing, the copy deals damage to that Pokemon and disappears. If a marked opposing Pokemon is knocked out, all of, all of the user's move cooldowns are reduced. So, that's that. Now, I could have sworn earlier I don't know if they hurried up, hurried up and changed the or maybe I'm thinking of, okay so we're gonna head to the practice area with scissor first right and I'm gonna go to him. Um, as far as the weapons and all that I don't really care you guys see I don't, the loadouts I don't really care for them Oh, see, this is why right here. You see, it's different. Notice that they're showing... The first set of moves I'm going to be using is dual wing beat and double hit. So you can see them in action. Um, not only that, but... I believe when, so he starts off as Scyther. Again, this goes back to the reference that I made earlier, if you're familiar with the earlier Pokemon games. 
before Scizor was even a, an official Pokemon. Um, he starts off as Scyther, and depending on which moves you pick, or at least that's the way it seems to be in the test server, you end up getting um, his, 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 his evolution into Scizor. So we'll see, because I think it's only one move that really makes a difference, because when I tested this earlier, he only seems to be transforming from one move. So let's see if it was just a glitch or or something. So right now this is Fury Cutter. Notice that he's, he swings and he goes for a second hit. favors the bottom lane because he is an all-arounder so quick attack that, that's his dash up so this is his uh that's his first batch of moves. So we're going to go ahead and speed this up a little bit so where we ain't got to sit there and wait. We'll go with dual wing beat. And we're going to go with double hit. Now with dual wing beat, this is good for clearing out a good bit of... Wild Pokemon like the bees. Now remember that when you, when you use double hit, he gets a boosted attack after the fact. So this would be. Something good if you're trying to like hit him with the Okie Doke. He's like a. I would say like a less agile Lucario, but. He has the power to make up for it. Get somebody running with that. As far as his unite move. Another thing, I'm not going to be playing any matches with these. I'm just showing the characters off. That's all. So that was that. That's how his first, his first moves look. So we can uh, go ahead and end this here because there's nothing else to show. Now notice during that little first thing, he didn't he didn't evolve into a Scizor whatsoever. And I, I tested it out prior. He um no matter how high you how your level is, it's dependent on the move that you get. It doesn't depend on what level he is. So I'm gonna go back. Which the test server kind of just sent me back to the Pokemon thing can see. Now there's something interesting about him is that 
depending on the again like i mentioned before depending on the move that you get it's going to determine whether or not he evolves into a scissor he evolves into a scissor but i think it's more so only dependent on one move because if let me show you if i get wing b let's say i get swords dance you know and this is the other move like even if i go all the way up to 15 like he does not evolve so he's just you know he doesn't do anything now again this just gives him an attack buff you know and with every eighth attack so i don't know if the best thing to do is to try to like attack uh until you get you know hit him like five times then go on the swords dance and then hit him for the last three so you can get the area of effect move or if maybe you can get your attack speed up enough to where you know you can get that eighth hit and get that uh that bonus That's basically that. I just wanted to show that off. Like even if we do do that, that, that's just something I wanted to show. But I just wanted to do that because I wanted to show you that his transformation only depends on one move that you get, and that's Bullet Punch. Like outside of Bullet pu Bullet Punch and a Dual Wing Beat are the only two moves that determine whether or not he stays a Scyther or if he goes into Sizzle. You know, and I think it's better. I think the, the way to go is to go with bullet punch because you do have that added with, it depends on what you're trying to do. If you're trying to get more crowd control maybe, I would say stay a Scythor and use dual wing beat. But if you're trying to get that um, that shield, because Scizor obviously, you know, he seems to have more survivability because um, he does get a shield from his bullet punch. So that can help in a tight spot. So you definitely want to get that. Um, upload this. Forgive me if you hear that one in the background. So we're just going to go ahead and level him up real quick. Right there. And get, get bullet punched and that turns him in the... And this is on. Now, I think this... The properties of these things right here change. Like, for example, if you get... If you turn them into scissor, the properties change. Let's see. Let's use a jump, marks them. Then go ahead and turn him up. And I think his unite move changes too when he gets to. Uh, he gets the scissor, All right? Like his unite move changes as well. And let me go to. I should have did this with the other moves, but let me just go here and show you. Get that out the way. I don't really do this with a dummy because it's not going to have no effect on the actual match. You know what I mean? Because people got damage reducers and things like such as that. So, uh, let me head down. He should be level 15 himself. There he is. Let's take a look at this real quick. Yeah, okay, so it does change. See, whereas before, see, if you read this now, it says if the user hits a Pokemon on the opposing team while dashing, the user grabs that Pokemon and continues dashing. If the grab Pokemon hits an, an illusionary copy, 
it will be it'll be left incapacitated so if you're a scissor it, the move based on what it looks seems like it seems like that move is like an insta kill basically if you're scissor and he heals from each of those punches too so that's dope His Scyther form doesn't do that. Now, if, if you guys want to, just pause and read right here. And I'm going to go back to his Scyther form, and we're going to see if that has the same definition. Because I, I didn't see that before. Because I could be wrong. I probably overlooked something. Let me uh, get back to... Oh, he probably just gets stunned. He doesn't get incapacitated like that. But that bullet punch heals him. Like, it makes no sense not to have that bullet punch. Like I said, this is more so for one-on-one. -on -one. But if you have a good team with you, you can do some... Um... You can get some good teamwork going. Staying a Scyther has its benefits because he has more crowd control. He's definitely meant Scizor is, base, is basically built for one-on-one -on -one fights. Because that healing factor is... That's dangerous. And this is a Pokemon that could probably... Yeah. You can jump him. So again, remember, it says that... If the grab Pokemon hits an illusionary copy, he'll be left incapacitated. I guess that means he gets stunned. Now we're going to go back. We're going to look at the original definition with Scyther. Because I don't remember it saying anything about him being left incapacitated. Yeah, okay, so it just deals damage. So I was right. If he remains Scyther, then the user doesn't get the the target doesn't get incapacitated. It's more so just damage. You know, if the Mark Pokemon is knocked out, all them So it's it's with his Unite move, depending on if you stay Scyther or going into Scizor. Whether or not you choose dual wing beat or bullet punch, that's the determining factor of whether or not you go into you stay as stay as a scyther or you go into scissor. Um, so those those two moves are the determining factor of whether or not you get the evolution. Also, if you do go into uh, if, if you stay as a scyther or his unite move, um, if you get a knockout with it, then he gets a cool he gets a cooldown reset on all his moves. But if you stay as a scissor, instead what it does is that it uh, it stuns, it grabs him and it stuns him. You know, so this one, you know, as a scissor, as a, as a scyther, it doesn't grab. So that was scissor right there. So he's a very cool Pokemon. I could see them implementing that you know, that one move determines whether or not he gets an evolution or not. That gimmick, I can see that going into some other Pokemon. Um, I'm trying to think of what other Pokemon had to hold an item in order to get evolved. So I'm, I can't really think at the moment, but yeah, I can see them implementing that. Now, with Dodrio, this is a Pokemon that kind of gets me uh, kind of hyped because it's a move that he has that lets me know they could be getting ready to bring in another Pokemon that I've been hoping to see in this game. So, first and foremost, let's look at his moves. He has Peck. You know, the user, well, first let's look at his basic attack right there. 
I should have did that with Sizzle. As a matter of fact, let me go back and do that with him just to get him out the way. Not like it matter. You know, and it, it changes depending on, and, and it doesn't show you what, what it changes into, so. Right here. After this Pokemon uses a new this move, its next basic attack. Its next basic attack will change and deal two consecutive basic attacks instead. The second attack, the second of these deal decreased damage. So that, that was with him. Going back to Dotrio. Right. Basic attack. Becomes a boosted attack with every third attack, dealing consecutive blows with each of the user's heads. When the user's spirit gauge, sprint gauge is full, and that's the gimmick with him, he has a sprint gauge, its basic attack will have a charge in the direct its basic its basic attack will have a charge in the direction it's facing and consume all of the sprint gauge. If this attack if this charging attack hits opposing Pokemon, all of the user's move cooldowns are reduced. So the the, the main gimmick with with this Pokemon is that you want to keep running because that's what charges the sprint gauge. As long as you're running around, the sprint gauge charges up. The moment you stop, the sprint gauge uh, goes away. So he has some good properties with his moves when the sprint gauge isn't full that could be useful as far as like hitting multiple people. But the idea is that you want to have that sprint gauge full at, at all costs. So no matter what you do, you run, you know, so right here is a gimmick say the Pokemon's movement speed increases when opposing Pokemon are nearby. While Pokemon, while the Pokemon is moving, its sprint gauge charges. When the sprint gauge is full, the Pokemon starts running with increased movement speed. If the Pokemon's movement speed decreases below a set speed, the sprint gauge will rapidly deplete. When Duduo scores a goal, it evenly divides its collected Aeos energy into two proportions and deposits them into the goal one at a time after Duduo evolves in Dodrio when it scores a goal it evenly divides its collected Aeos energy into three portions and deposits them into the goal at its, at its uh, one at a time so basically when you see me score a goal with this Pokemon each of them each of the heads are going to score a goal right and this is good for multiple reasons so let's say if you you know when, when it comes to certain well, every Pokemon up until this point. When you tried to score a goal, you know, you would have to wait until the meter completely charges up for him to score, for that Pokemon to score every point that that Pokemon is holding, right? With this Pokemon, you can actually score a little bit at a time, even though you may not get the full uh, amount in the goal, because it divides it evenly, you can score enough points to actually get, say, like, enough to win the game. Because it's been some tight games where if I had only scored, like, I would say, like, three more points or two more points, uh, then we would have won the game, basically. So, you'll see what I mean when I actually uh, do a game with them. So, first up, we got, we have Try Attack. It has the user attack with its beaks in a cone in front of itself dealing damage to opposing Pokemon and applying one of the following random effects a decrease to attack and damage over time for a set amount of time a decrease to basic attack speed or a decrease to movement speed when the user's sprint gauge is full the user instead shoots out three projectiles one red one yellow and one blue in the designated direction if a Pokemon if a projectile hits an opposing Pokemon the projectile deals damage and applies one of the aforementioned effects based on its color. Um, after this move is used, the next the user's next basic attack deals additional damage and restores some of the user's HP. The maximum of two uses can be kept in reserve for this move. And to upgrade, the user's next basic attack after using this move restores more HP. When the user's sprint gauge is full, this move's cooldown is reduced. And next we have Drill Peck. This move has the user move forward while striking with its sharp beak multiple times, dealing damage to opposing Pokemon it hits. When the user's sprint gauge is full, the user's dashes the user dashes forward while striking with its sharp beaks multiple times. Uh, sorry, my head my headset is beeping, so that's gonna throw me off. 
um, dealing damage to opposing Pokemon and it hits and shoving them using this move fully consumes the Sprint Gauge. This upgrade reduces this move's cooldown. Also, when this move hits opposing Pokemon, it restores a portion of the user's health uh, HP based on the amount of damage dealt. So there's that. So next up, we have Quick Attack, you know, which is the same as uh, what's, uh, what Scyther has. Has the user dash forward, increasing its movement speed for a short time and dealing damage to opposing Pokemon it hits. This move's cooldown is reduced if it hits an opposing Pokemon. And then we got Agility, which is a buff. Removes all status conditions from the user and charges its sprint gauge. Afterward, the, user, the user's movement speed increases for a short time and its sprint gauge ch charges faster. This upgrade after this move is used, the user's sprint gauge becomes fully charged. So that's that right there. Now this is the move right here that kind of gets me excited. This is jump kick. Um, has the user leap forward while kicking. If this move makes contact with an opposing Pokemon or obstacle, the user leaps over, leaps over it and stumps the ground when it lands, dealing damage to opposing Pokemon in the area of effect and decreasing their movement speed for a short time. If this move makes contact with an opposing Pokemon or obstacle, the user's sprint gauge charges. If this move makes contact with an opposing Pokemon, its cooldown is reduced. The upgrade when this when the user stumps the ground after leaping, opposing Pokemon in the area of effect are also left unable to act. In its Unite move, Triple Trample. It has the user run to the designated location while running. The user is immune to hindrances. If the user makes contact with an opposing Pokemon while running, it deals damage to them and throws them into the air. When the user arrives at the designated location, its attack increases for a short time and it is granted a shield. Also, the sprint gauge charges faster for a short time. So, for this, uh, For his um, held items, I kind of go with, you know, obviously, Scope Lens is always good. First off, Float Stone is a gimme, because with him be needing to run constantly in order to keep that sprint gauge full, you need movement speed, so that's the first thing. Then you want to get that uh, that critical damage, which um, is going to help out a lot with, uh, with getting those uh, kills. And since his Unite move already gives him an attack boost, energy amplifier kind of is like a, a no-brainer but also if you wanted to drop that so let's say if you plan on using high jump then going with razor claw uh what the fuck is it right here will be the way to go because when it whenever a pokemon who's holding this does melee damage any melee attacking pokemon any well, wow any melee attacking pokemon again the my headset is beeping i need to charge it um it allows it to slow them so i believe that effect stacks with what he already naturally does let me put this on the headset because i'm tired of this thing beating put this on the headset real quick on the uh, charger because this thing throws me off <laughs> i'm trying to explain the damn Okay, that means I'm gonna have to give me a second. I'm gonna switch this over. Well, y'all still be able to hear it, no problem. Yeah, so I didn't even look at that before, but that's basically what I use. An energy amplifier isn't a bad way to go either. So we're gonna go with practice. And obviously it's, it's kinda a no-brainer. I'm gonna keep Scizor right there just because. But um, having X speed on them is just the way to go. Uh, either that or uh, smoke screen. Be due to the fact that you know you want to be fat or excuse me, slow smoke. Um, but X speed is kind of the way to go because he already gets that boost speed. He needs to be constantly running anyway. So. We're going to get to the scoring, and I'm going to show you exactly what I mean when I was talking about him, to, you know, you'll see the visual of it. I'm going to go with 
heck? Let's go on this. Get all these up. Showcase this. Now notice anytime I'm running, like you see how that gauge fills up, the moment I stop, it depletes. You have to keep running with them. And when it's full, one of his attacks get uh, a bonus effect. You know, they get an additional, it does more damage. But then again, I got him at 15. So if I just, like it's just a regular peck. But if I run, he dashes while the sprint gauge is full. And that quick attack just gives him You know what I'm saying? More. It, it fills that gauge up quicker. So I'm gonna get try attack this time. That try attack is a is a wide uh, cone shape attack. You know what I'm saying? So that's that. But if I do it with the with the sprint gauge full, he, he kind of pokes everybody that's around. You know so it, just basically, his his regular attack is good for just wiping out, you know, what I'm saying groups at a time. Um, go with agility, you know, it boosts that up. Now this is what I was saying. See how that's split into three different ones? You know what I'm saying? You can score a little bit at a time with him alone, and that could be just enough for you to win the game. So that's going to be cool to see that in action. Let's get down here. I got him at level 15. Stupid me. I beat his levels up to level 15. That right there, that's unique. I actually like that. Of course, he still has to worry about the little slowdown in the area. So that was his... If I attack this right here... So the next moves, I'm gonna show this off. I'm gonna show off high jump and drill pick. area show off these last two oh so my fan kind of scared me a little bit so I'm just gonna go ahead and just beef this up Up. 
pick and jump kick. So we just keep running around. But first, let me just show you what regular drill pick does. You know, it, it does a little cone shape damage in the, you know, in front. You know, picks him three. He doesn't move at all. But if you move with it, you know what I'm saying? He stumps him and he pushes him out the way when the sprint gauge is full. So, you can definitely knock Rotom back. I don't think, he, yeah, he only keeps one of these in reserve at a time. The crazy part is, after you use this move, his um his sprint gauge charges just as, at the same time around the same time and jump kick oh shit I missed it oh, there's gonna be a whole lot of that going on in the game that's gonna be so helpful There. See that jump right there? Now, first, interesting enough, jump kick is actually a oh, jump kick is actually a fighting type move. So when I see that, I'm assuming that maybe Hitmonlee or Hitmontop is on its or on their way to the game. That kind of gets me excited. Actually gets me excited because like I said the fact that they put a fighting type move in here like high jump I mean like jump kick lets me know that we may begin hit my lead next which is gonna be crazy that seems to be the combo right there hit him with drill pick stomp on him and boom so that was dojo so interesting enough, you know, two cool Pokemon. I kind of wish they would have put Mew in this test server so that we can see what Mew has to offer. But I guess with them being so close to release, I guess they said it wasn't no need to put them in the test server yet. But, you know, it looked like the test server and the, and the actual game is going to get them at the same time. So with that being said, man, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Of me testing out Dodrio and Scizor. I know I was kind of long with it. But um, I hope you guys did enjoy it for what it was. But with that being said, peace. And I will see you guys later for more Pokemon Unite.